everybody. Today we're going to talk about two classes of plants, monocots and dicots. The way that we're going to do this is to discuss the seed. A seed is the result of a plant sperm and a plant egg uniting to fertilize the ovule. Essentially, a seed is a protective coat surrounding a survival pod for the plant. This will enable it to have all the nutrients that it needs while it begins to grow. Let's take a step backwards for a minute and think back to winter term. When we think about photosynthesis, we take water, carbon dioxide, and ATP in order to make sugar and oxygen. This is what mature plants do. However, in order for a seed to grow, it needs to undergo respiration, and so it needs oxygen and sugar in order to grow. The sugar comes in the form of a stored starchy material held within the seed pod that allows the plant to get a head start. Let's take a look at the example of a bean seed. So this is basically a kidney bean. On the outside, it has a protective covering. The spot on the side of the bean is called the hilum. Hilum literally means belly button, and this is the site where there originally the bean was attached to the wall of the ovary inside the flower. If you've ever eaten black-eyed peas, which are white with a black spot in the center, the hilum is what gives them their namesake of the black eye. So black-eyed peas look kind of like this. Now we're going to look inside the bean. So we're going to imagine that we've sliced it in half lengthwise. We still have the seed coat on the outside, and we still have the hilum here. Usually the inside of a bean is kind of a pale yellow color, and this is what you'd probably see inside. This top part up here that looks like leaves is called the epicotyl. These will ultimately grow into the leaves and then also into the stem of the plant. The part that becomes the stem is called the hypocotyl. Underneath the hypocotyl, you'll sometimes see a structure called the radical, and that will ultimately become the root of the plant. The rest of the seed pod is made up of what's called the cotyledon, and the cotyledons are what nourishes this particular type of plant as it undergoes respiration and germination. This type of plant is called a dicot. Remember that here I've only drawn half of the bean. The other half might have been opened up and thrown away somewhere, but we have two cotyledons, one on the left and one on the right. If we look at something like corn, which is a monocot, we'll see that there are some structures that they have in common, but that other structures are different from one another. The monocot doesn't have a very visible epicotyl, and it also doesn't have a very visible hypocotyl either. The stored food is stored in a place called the endosperm, which comes from the polar bodies made when the egg and sperm fuse. We can see a single cotyledon, and we can also see a radical. But because we only have one cotyledon, we call this a monocot rather than a dicot. Seeds often can lie dormant for years until the conditions are optimal. Once they begin germinating, they need to use up the stored glucose, which is stored either in the endosperm or in the cotyledon, depending on whether they're a monocot or a dicot. Then they can begin producing carbon dioxide, and they can begin growing. Without the stored food housed within their seed pods, they would not be able to undergo the respiration that they need in order to grow. Don't forget that seeds must respirate until they grow a set of true leaves. Let's imagine that we planted a bean seed and a corn kernel in the ground and then watered them. The first thing we would likely notice was a tiny little shoot poking out of the ground. The dicot, or the bean, would grow two tiny sets of little green cotyledons, whereas the monocot, the corn, would probably only grow one. The stem would then continue to grow above the initial set of cotyledons, or the single cotyledon in the monocot. All the while, these seedlings are undergoing respiration. They're using the stored energy stored here in their cotyledons in order to power their growth. Eventually, both the dicot and the monocot will begin to grow two true leaves. Once they've grown true leaves, they can begin to undergo photosynthesis, where they will absorb carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and light from the sun and use that to generate ATP and sugar. They will no longer need to rely on the stored supplies housed within their endosperm or within their cotyledons. Because the seedlings need to undergo respiration for a while before they're mature enough to undergo photosynthesis, it's crucial for them to have stored food within their seed pods. That's it. See you all in class.